Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. Antioch is known for many things, but perhaps most famous as being the place where believers, followers of Jesus, were first called Christians. Now, when the term was given, it was not meant as a cultural compliment. When it was given, it was to deride them. It was to demean them. They were followers of Christ. And yet, it has become uh, the term that around the world has become synonymous with people who identify with the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. I must confess to you that all too often the word has been very empty and is often used for things and for people who are anything but true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but I want to say to you, it should mean something to us to truly be a Christian. And by the grace of God, we should seek uh, to build other fellow Christians and to encourage them and to help them. And that is the context of what we find in Antioch in Acts chapter number 11. You remember that Barnabas was sent from the church in Jerusalem to see what was going on in Antioch. And in verse 23, it says, Who when he came and had seen the grace of God. That's powerful. How do you see the grace of God? The only way you can see the grace of God is in a person's life. He saw God at work in these people. I wonder, does anyone see the grace of God in my church, in your church? Does anyone see the grace of God in our families? Does anyone see the grace of God in our lives? He had seen the grace of God. The Bible said he was glad. There's nothing more happy for a believer than seeing God work in the lives of others. He was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Could I point out to you that the way a church is built is when the believers in the church are built. Someone once said that we need to give less attention to building big churches and more attention to building stronger Christians. I truly believe that. Because when you build strong Christians, friend, that's the building blocks of the church. The church itself will grow and will be built up. Verse 25 says, Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Everybody remember Saul? Uh, we're about to read a great deal more about him, this Apostle Paul in the early stages. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it by the elders to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now, we've given a lot of attention to Barnabas and some to Saul, but I'd like you just to simply see the church uh, at Antioch. I want you to see what God was doing there to build true Christians, true followers of Jesus Christ, true testaments of his grace in that part of the world. And there are three basic things that uh, were done to help build true Christians there. Now, of course, it began with the gospel. So you've got to build on the right foundation. Uh, you can't have Christians without Christ. And so, the earlier verses, they heard the message of Jesus, they trusted Christ, uh, they are truly born again. And I would say to you, if you're listening today, if you're trying to be good without God, you, you've missed Jesus. Because it's only through Christ that you can be a Christian. You must come through simple, humble faith, acknowledging your lost condition, 
and looking to the finished work of Jesus Christ. And if you'll do that, Jesus will save you. Christ will come to live within. But then there is a, a growth in grace, a growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I see three things in the closing verses of Acts chapter number 11. First of all, they were exhorted. The Bible says when Barnabas came, he exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Uh, you've got to keep your heart stirred. You've got to keep your heart uh, passionate after the Lord Jesus. It's so easy, so easy to trust Christ as your Savior, be excited about your newfound faith, and if you're not careful, allow your heart to grow cold to the things of God. Allow your, your heart to, to get distracted on so many other things. And so if you want to build true Christian faith, then first there must be an exhortation, and it has to be heart level. That's what an exhortation is. Uh, it's a, a stirring of the will. It is speaking to the inner man. This is not just intellectual uh, addition. You know, I'm, I know more about it. No, no, your heart is engaged. Look at the strong word, cleave unto the Lord. You belong to the Lord, but keep your heart close to him. And so there must be exhortation. And every day you must be in the word and in prayer and with other believers who can sharpen you. Uh, you have to learn yourself and you know, have to know how to keep your own heart stirred up before the Lord. So there must be exhortation. Then they must not only be exhorted, they must be edified. This is really important because after Barnabas has exhorted them, he goes and gets Saul, and the two of them come back, and they stay there a whole year in Antioch. Why are they there for a year? The Bible says they assembled with the church and taught the people. This is what we need. Not only the heart to be exhorted, but now the mind to be edified to develop the mind of Christ, to learn the word, to be taught, to be instructed. Uh, pray that God will help you to grow in your understanding, to know more of the wisdom that comes from above. That's why the assembly with the church is so important. That's why the teaching of the word of God day by day is so necessary to our healthy soul and growth in grace. Uh, we must be exhorted and we must be edified. And then don't miss the, the closing verses of, verse number, of chapter number 11. I don't think it's the footnote, it's the exclamation point. They were engaged. Did you ever notice that the whole thing turns around? First Jerusalem ministers to Antioch, now Antioch ministers to Jerusalem. They turn around and end up helping the people who initially helped them and sent the gospel to them. So now what's happening? These new believers are getting off the bench and getting in the game. They're not just participant, or spectators, they're participants. They're not just hearing, they're giving. They're laboring, they're working, they're engaged in the work of the Lord. If you want to see a new believer or an old believer grow in grace and be built up and truly be the Christian God saved them to be, then their heart must be exhorted regularly to cleave to the Lord. Uh, their, their mind must be edified in the things of God. And then their life must be engaged in the work of the Lord. Interestingly enough, this church, this group of Christians at Antioch we've just gotten acquainted with in Acts 11 are going to become the great missionary sending church of the rest of the book of Acts. And they're going to advance the gospel, you got it, to the uttermost part of the earth. The adventure continues. And so if we really want to see God's work be built up, we ourselves must be built up, and we must seek to build up the Christians around us. And may your heart cleave to the Lord today. May your mind be more and more the mind of Christ. May you grow in your, your knowledge of the things of God, and may you find your place and do your part in the work of the Lord. That is what it means to be a true Christian. Though no more scripture is being written, the story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why enjoying the journey exists to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. 
we pray that you truly will enjoy the journey. But we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.